Uh, as many of you know, we did have Len Komorowski, the president of the Cavaliers, and uh, Quicken Loans Arena scheduled for today. Due to the NBA lockout and a gag order by the judge in which they are fining NBA teams and owners $1 million per incident for talking in public, <laughs> Len unfortunately didn't think we were worth a million dollars from the dad's pocket. So he has promised that he would do something for us at a later time, so we will have Len Komorowski either later this year or in 2012. But we have an amazing stand-in in Dave here. You know, we're going to broaden the topic beyond just the Cavaliers from one sports team and talk really about this region as a whole. And Dave, you know, in your role as a Greater Cleveland Sports Commission over the past decade plus, let's start with the big three, their impact on the economy. The Cavs, the Indians, the Browns excluding preseason or playoff games. Uh, respectively, the Cavs play 41 home games, the Indians 81, and the Browns 8. So what does that do for the region to bring that kind of uh, thing for those games? Thanks. Um, one, if, if anyone wanted to leave now, because they were expecting Len, so, you know, <laughs> I, I won't take any offense. Um, here, it, there haven't been, uh, to my knowledge, any, any definitive studies that would say this is exactly what a Browns season means or a Cavs season means to the community. Um, but but it's it's very clear that um, certainly on the on the economic side, um, these teams each mean um, tens and tens of millions of dollars to the local economy. Um, ultimately, I mean, there, there's a lot of great things about having the teams. You know, certainly national visibility, quality of life, um, the kind of things we take take a close look at is how they impact the travel and tourism industry and how they impact the economy. And what most economists will tell you is someone coming from Lakewood or someone coming from Westlake or Solon uh, to, to come down to an Indians game, Browns game, Cavs game, really is neutral for the economy. It's great for downtown, and, and large majorities of the people will come down and, and, and ha have a meal before and so on. Um, but, but most economists say if, if they didn't spend their money on that Indians ticket, they would have spent it on a movie or something, you know, something uh, other entertainment related. But the bottom line is that, that a significant portion of people going to any of those uh, sporting events are from outside the region, whether they drive in from Mansfield or whether they drive in from, uh, uh, from the city of the opposing team. Um, in fact, the Cavs, the last year of LeBron, they had done a study, it was pretty interesting, um, over 20% of every ticket buyer, I don't think I'd get gagged for a million dollars if I, if I talk about that. So. I think you're pretty um, safe. Uh, over 20% of every non-season ticket, or every single game, uh, single uh, uh, game ticket that was sold was from outside the region. So if you think, I mean, just 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 in round numbers, if if even and it's probably high, but if three quarters, if if 15,000 to 20,000 people there were season ticket holders. So the other 5,000, at least 1,000 of those were from out of market. So you think for every single Cavs game, at a minimum, 1,000 people were coming into town from outside the market, and they were, they were spending their money to park for their game tickets, for their food. Many of them stayed over for gas they bought when they were here, on and on and on. And, and that's what drives the economics. Um, you think about the Browns, while it's only, you know, it's only eight dates a year in the regular season, um, the, the, maybe you know, the, the Browns backers largest organized fan club of any sports team in the world. And um, in every single, every single game, there are, are um, numerous Browns backers clubs just organized that will bring in 20, 30, 40, 100 plus people. And, and again, if I had to guess, I, I, you know, it is probably at least five to 10,000, if not more people who come to every Browns game that are from out of market. Um, and, and in many ways, the same goes for the Indians. So while, while it's, what we don't have is, is definitive numbers uh, um, to say, you know, a brown season means $50 million to the local economy, we do know that in all instances, it is in the tens of millions of dollars. Interesting. You know, and beyond those big three, there are a number of minor league and, and semi-professional teams. You've got the Thrashers, you've got the Monsters, you've got the Captains. Now, how does that change the dynamics of it? Because you're not going to have those people coming from the Browns backers or those people coming from uh, from out of city to see uh, the Detroit Tigers play. Right. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things. Certainly, in a small way, they, they do help the economy. I mean, every one of those teams that play, the opposing teams come into town. 
they stay in the players, the management, the trainers, they all come into town. Um, they, um, uh, uh, they stay in hotels. Be, you'd be very surprised how many teams from visiting, uh, how many players from visiting teams of all sports um, go to um, UH, and particularly the Cleveland Clinic Sports Health, to get checked up. Um, you know, I, overall, the minor league sports are, are um, their impact is probably greater on the quality of life in the region than it is economically. But even them, uh, uh, even each of the minor league teams, certainly um, uh, drives some some economics to the community. Interesting. And so you think about the people coming in, but you have these venues. I mean, three venues that probably would not exist without the Browns, the Indians, or the Cavs. And yet, you know, combined, you've got 41, 81, and 8. It's not a lot of games where people are coming in. And yes, it's millions of dollars of people coming in for those. But what I find fascinating is that these venues themselves create opportunities for other events that are driven initially by sports. I mean, you've got concerts, circuses, other programs. How do they maximize these revenue opportunities, too? Well, I mean, it's a great point. I think in, in, in every one of the cases, particularly looking at, at, at Cavs, Indians, and Browns, and, and each controls their stadium, it's a tremendous asset that they try to utilize. And you hear people all the time talk about a shame that you know, Brown Stadium has 10 dates a year. Um, but they all work very hard to maximize uh, what they have in those assets. And, and um, many times, the, those events um, that come in to use the, 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 uh, uh, those facilities, um, they're sometimes as big, if not bigger, economic drivers than, than the teams themselves, or certainly a, a Browns game, a Cavs game, an Indians game. Um, and you could go across the board. Again, certain events like a circus, I, I don't know the demographics, probably is largely local, but you have some major concerts. There are people who will drive in from Columbus, from Buffalo, Detroit, Pittsburgh to see when, it, you know, if uh, an Elton John plays here or somebody else. Um, when you have certainly major sporting events, clearly uh, uh, the kinds of events that, that, are, that bring people in, whether it's the All-Star Games. Um, actually, the Browns just hosted the NFL um, started a, um, uh, 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 in conjunction with USA Football, a national seven-on-seven -seven flag football championship, and they held the tournament here in Cleveland. And, uh, and, and that event brought in, I forgot the number of teams, but it was, it was, I think it was the top 16 teams. So here you had, you know, probably 12, 14 kids on a team, plus their parents and grandparents and the coaches, all coming into town for four days of a tournament. And what the Browns offered is you can use the field. And it was a you know, great experience for these kids to play on the field, but that brought in hundreds of people and probably left behind some six-figure amount in the economy when all was said and done. That's interesting.